The Highway Life, based on a true story. Hey everybody, it's your boy Bolo Biggs coming to you live from down by the river at the Highway Life Resort. I got a question for you. Do you know where you'll be in the next three to four weeks? Maybe in between homes? Or even wondering where your next family vacation will be? Well, I have the answer for you. Timeshare on the Highway Life. Two weeks minimum. Book it now. You have to take me with you because I have nowhere else to stay. Let me show you around. Tonight is actually open mic night. And guess what, guys? We have two live crew, special guests tonight. Two live crew, yes, indeed. They were banned in the USA, but they're not banned on the highway life. Down by the river, get your exclusive two weeks minimum timeshare now. Email below, bolobigs13 at gmail. Yes, I can't afford a real... <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a damn fool. But guess what, y'all? Guess what came in early? My thermal tape break tape. My thermal break tape came in early, guys. A few days early. So, yeah, let's get started. Let's do this shit. Fuck. Let's go. Oh, yeah, it's raining. Fuck my life. We're just gonna have to work on something else. Man, I had to take the lights out, guys. Apparently, when two live crew was out making all that noise, Somebody caught a cop on us, man. Game warden came down, down by the river, and uh, was like, man, y'all can't do this. You gotta have a permit. How many of y'all knew that you have to have two separate permits if you're gonna have midget strippers and a donkey at the same show? I didn't know that. So last night I was able to uh, finish up my pre-insulation. I don't know, in the background of my videos, um, some of these mess that I have here. I've been working on it since the summer, doing my break here and there. I've done it in stages um, only because I was trying to be careful with it. Um, so these pockets here along the side um, these, the reason why they're two different the reason why they're two different colors guys is because I've been on and off doing it. Um, so some of them are older than others. Um, anyways, I don't like dead space. I don't like voids and I don't like um, pockets. They are a potential for moisture and build up. Same thing with these rails up top, the one from side to side of the ribs. They actually are very strong, but it's basically folded metal and then it's, it's run over. There's a pocket inside of that and Again, I'm not a fan of pockets um, for moisture and things. Um, Bluebird Parkway, Alyssa with Bluebird Parkway, if that's even your real name. Um, I actually addressed it in a video um, before I got a chance to. Thanks for stealing my thunder there, buddy. Um, I was going to fill the gaps up top um, with insulation foam, um, which I've already done. Um, to help protect that pocket. Um, I've used the great stuff on all of this, guys, all the way around, the black can. Um, you guys saw me use it underneath my bus when I was filling voids, um, the pockets that were left behind. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure you guys are careful with that and don't go overboard. I did mine in stages just because I know it is strong enough to move things. Um, let me show you what I mean. Here is the rear. This metal piece doesn't serve much purpose other than to hold your wires and uh, protect your wires. If you guys see here, you see that bulge that's, that's come out? Um, yeah. <laughs> this one I've already taken care of. I've cut some of it out. That's how strong that shit is. Don't get carried away. Spray it in sections. Um, it's gonna, as soon as it hits air, it activates and it works. Um, the ribs up top, when you do get it in there, as soon as you see 
the white or the whatever, the yellow color, getting ready to pierce through the hole, stop. Because it's gonna keep dripping anyway, but you don't want it to keep expanding. Like I said, the moment it hits air, it starts to work, it starts to activate. Um, it's very important that you don't overfill it because once it starts to activate and it hits air, it's gonna create a, a layer and the inside middle section, which hasn't hit air right away, will start to expand. You don't wanna push your ceiling off these ribs because um, then your seam is gonna bust and so on and so on. So the moment you guys see it starting to come through, stop. It's gonna drip anyway, you can't stop it. Um, one other thing for you guys to see. So once you spray it and it starts dripping, the moment you're able to touch it, break it. It, it breaks off really easy um, because what hasn't hit air yet is gonna still push out and you're gonna see new drips. The only reason I say that guys is because if you don't let it keep coming out, it's gonna keep expanding up top. Um, again, it's gonna burst something. Yeah, good job, Alyssa. Tell Jake, I say, what's up? I gotta run up the road real quick, guys. Before I lay down my thermo tape, I'm gonna take you guys along with me. I gotta go to the weigh station. Um, the folks that, you know, sell gravel and all and dirt and all the mulch stuff. Um, when I first got the bus, I got it weighed um, to see how much everything, how heavy everything was with the seats in it. So once I remove everything, I knew what I could put back and how much I could add. Um, which I thought was very important. Um, you got to be cautious of it. George, Jorge, El Jefe, my brother from another mother, will be by tomorrow morning uh, to help me fasten down my boards. That's why I got to hurry up and do the thermal tape tonight. They are not actually going to charge me to go uh, drive on this way station. So I'm hoping I can take you guys along for the ride. And we are at, how much is that? 7280. 7280 guys. Was that 8940 or 8990? The bus weighs uh, 7780, which includes my custom chair that I had put in and about 20 pounds of stuff I had it up top and on my dash, um, but we'll call it 7780. Originally the bus uh, weighed 8940 when all the seats were in there. Um, so if you carry the one, ah. Uh, not all yellow people are good geniuses in math, guys. Don't be racist, 1160. Um, there's a stereotype for a reason. I'm pretty happy with that, guys. Um, shit. At first, I was confused because I, I only took out like four or five rows of seats, but I remember I had the handicap chair lift, which had to be three or 400 pounds. So um, make sure when you guys want to do your tests for before and after, make sure everything's consistent, full tank of gas, Bus allows for 14,000 gross, gross um, vehicle weight. Um, I'm, no, I'm not going to go anywhere near that, so I don't even care. Um, I'm allowed to put back 1160 plus whatever I want um, up to a certain point. I'm thinking like a stripper pole. Midget stripper pole, gold plated, maybe even some... Damn, it got cold. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Thermo brake tape two rows it comes in uh one eighth inch by three inch by 75 feet i ordered two cost me 90 bucks uh, i think it's well worth it i miscalculated so i had to order a little bit more um i forgot that the two by six is gonna take double um, because it's actually five and a half. Um, anywhere and everywhere that touches metal, I'm gonna break with the thermal break tape. For those that actually did not catch my video, my previous videos on me discussing thermal break, thermal transfer, um, I'm gonna include a video by a gentleman. Uh, it's about three minutes long. He explains a lot better than my fob ass. I don't think it's the same brand. Um, but same concept. Um, I'll share that underneath and I'll share the link where I ordered uh, through Amazon for the tape. Guys, with that said, um, I'm not putting my tape on the actual floor. I'm putting it on the wood. 
Uh, same concept, but I know I, I still need to move it back and forth, uh, depending on where George and I um, actually um, fasten it down. The ribs, I'm gonna put the tape on the rib, but not on the entire rib, um, only where the wood touches to save some money. And if there's no point, because when I have it professionally spray foam, that is my thermal break, uh, which is why I actually did all the stuff up top because when I do have it professionally spray foam, I don't think the guys are gonna be as detailed as me and I wanna get as much use as possible. First section I am addressing is right above the window. I am using a two by three so that I could use um, it to hang my sh uh, shelf or cabinet from. If you actually look, it doesn't cover the actual window. This piece of metal here that runs all the way down will get thermal brake tape. This piece will get thermal brake tape. This section here where my two by six will go, which will help hold up my partition, will also get thermal brake tape. The middle rib where the windows are, I'm not covering those ribs guys. It's cause I'm gonna have a separate board, which I'm gonna route out, put thermal tape on it, then place it between the bottom window to the top of the window because I need to be able to access my windows in case somebody in the neighborhood wants to do a drive-by. I don't want, I, I really don't understand why some folks, and it kind of puzzles me that you would permanently cover your window. Now, when I say permanently, I've seen it. From floor to ceiling, you guys use wood and then panel it off and build your wall. You can't access it. Maybe you guys live in a better neighborhood than I do, but I gotta be able to remove my window at any given time if I have to replace it. Which brings me to another point. My cap for those windows rail is gonna have a lip on it so that I can close off my windows whenever I want. Remember I told you guys, I'm building it like a cockpit to keep the temperature out or the temperature in. In case you guys were ever wondering, all this shit I'm doing, where you're sealing it off and so on, but what about your windows? That's how I'm addressing the window. This section, all the ribs, I will address once the spray foam is applied by the professionals. When I do my sealing, my tongue and groove, I will be placing my thermal break before I put my wood down. I only need tape here and a section here and then all the way down. For the section underneath the window, I'm gonna be using right underneath the window, not covering it, just to the lip, this section here and then all the way down and then the next section. So my placement of my two by four will actually be just on the lip just this spot here. I'm not going with this section here. The reason why I'm not putting tape on that rib or any of those other ribs. So the other way to combat thermal transfer is limiting how much wood actually touches metal. That's why I'm going with the bigger wood. Um, because I'm limiting myself on where it touches, um, I have to make it stronger. Next section down, where my other two by four section will be I'm gonna be right above it, that rail. Again, limiting where I touch metal. Now this wood, when placed, this wood sticks out further than this rib. Being that the wood sticks out further than the rib, the spray foam will go over the metal. Then they shave it down. My insulation, would be my thermal for that. Now if you're like, well, that's crazy. Why wouldn't you use that metal? Cause it's so much stronger. Again, limiting how much wood touches metal. I am, however, little grasshopper, going to use a two by three, not this one, and run it this way. However, I'm gonna place it slightly to the left or the right of the rib. Cause it is stronger. I just won't touch it. My spray foam will be a closed cell. Not only will it help with trans, um, thermal transfer, but it will also help with moisture, and it actually helps with structure. Um, you can verify that if you want. Those are the immediate places where I am going to place my tape. Um, as I progress on my frame build, I will add tape. It is very costly, and I don't want to damage it. I have my first piece of tape down. It feels good to the touch. This piece that's behind here is actually only about an inch. Remember the tape is three inch, so I'm actually gonna cut it and use it in other places. 
I don't think I jumped the gun at all on ordering more tape because I do have areas where I, I totally forgot about. But it's actually going to work out. Um, it's a e very easy application. Um, make sure you guys use a really sharp razor, brand new razor when you're cutting it um, in half. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my three inch, cut it in half uh, for the one inch area. So I'll have an inch and a half to work with. Um, I'm pretty happy with this process so far. Definitely uh, strongly recommend it. I, again, I know it's a little bit pricey, but you're paying for comfort. Um, my next piece. Um, I know that's a goofy cut, guys, but like I said, I had three inches to work with, and I only need an inch for the other areas. So I roughly guesstimated my other pieces. I'll cut better, um, but this piece here will go there. This tape, you're supposed to be able to just roll it with the entire row, but I'm doing it in sections. So what I'm doing is just kind of eyeing my measurement and just cutting off what I need. It is only sticky on one side that comes off the row and it has a, uh, a sheet protector, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is place it here. Um, I'm gonna give it a little bit of lip So that's my next piece and then I'm just gonna cut it here I'm sorry for the bad angle guys I'm working by myself actually it's less than an inch so I'm just gonna leave the entire piece there I actually have to cut here excuse me here because that's where my wood is gonna run and and in so I'm just gonna kind of eye it I can always go back and trim it later And then I'm just gonna fold it back slightly. Now this tape that it's here, this side's not sticky. I need that there, so I'm just gonna cut this off. And I'm done with that. Have it an extra piece, so I'm just probably gonna put that one here. I put that piece here and I'm just gonna take this off again this part is not sticky I'm gonna fold this underneath only because I don't want it to get it ripped out if I should uh, grab it by accident voila hey, since I have a long stretch to do I'm actually gonna attempt at doing this just by rolling it out to kind of show you guys so I'm gonna take it right to the lip there and you just slowly press it as you unroll it very easy process man I kind of love this I'm gonna stop at the window and cut it but I really want to just keep going Unfortunately, I don't want this video to run long. The good thing about this is you can connect it, the next piece to it. And then I'm just going to cut it in half for the next piece. When I cut it, I'm just giving it an extra maybe quarter inch from the rail and then I'm just cutting it I'm letting my finger guide it and I gotta make sure I have enough for my 2x3 because it actually sits on that rail partially and that's it with the rough cut I'm gonna put that on the bottom um, where the wood's gonna sit Oh, that's the start to it guys. Um, the video quality is really poor just because of the lighting on the inside of this bus But I hope you guys get the idea guys. I'm gonna knock this out the rails put tape on my 2x6 wood So it's ready to go um, The video quality is getting poor and I don't want uh, I, I don't, I don't want to put out uh, Something that's not useful. I hope you guys found some good usage out of this particular video also um, I'm pretty excited about laying my first piece of wood and getting it fastened down.
Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, people ask me all the time, like, what's the hardest part of this entire bill? Um, you know, I mean, like, you do so much, you do it by yourself. I call in people when I need to, um, when I need two hands. Um, but the hardest part about this entire build, guys, is videoing. I absolutely try my best to put out a good video that's educational, um, but at the same time where the students aren't falling asleep. <laughs> Um, but yeah, putting out videos is, is actually kind of hard. The hardest part. You got to put everything down. You got to set up camera and so on. Um, anyways, I'm blabbing. Um, be good. Be good to each other. Your boy Biggs loves you. Um, I'm out. Deuces.